Hi guys, I'm Johnny Chivers. I'm a data engineer by trade, working Monday to Friday in the financial services sector, five times AWS certified, and I like nothing more in my free time than making videos for this very YouTube channel. So in the second lesson of Glue 101, we're gonna take a look at the ETL offering. But what is Glue ETL? So Glue ETL stands for Extract, Transform and Load. It's a fully serverless solution from AWS in the Glue ecosystem that allows us to move data around AWS or from on-premise from point A to point B, interacting with the Glue data catalog that we populated in the previous lesson. Its serverless nature lowers that barrier to entry for developers in the cloud. So because there's not reams of infrastructure to manage, junior developers or senior developers can just get on with moving data from point A to point B and not have to worry about any of the underlying infrastructure that, that Spark engine is running on. Now for the big question, when do I use Glue ETL over EMR? And the answer is always the same, it depends. And I get asked this 10 times a day. Glue ETL really is that day-to-day -day kind of tool for the job. It's where I run all my daily jobs that need scheduled or my event-driven workflows. It works really well with gigabits or terabits of data, doing repeatable processes, loading data from point A to point B with transformations in between. So where does that leave EMR in my opinion? EMR is great when we have workloads that are gonna take a long time to run and we need fine grained control over the memory. So I tend to think about EMR now, if I have a data scientist and they wanna run a query that's gonna last days, it's gonna take a thousand nodes and we're really gonna to have to fine grain control that EMR memory. We've no option. Glue wouldn't be a good use case for this. We don't want our glue jobs running for days on end. You know, most we want a glue job running is for a few hours. I tend to have these running at minutes, you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, doing delta flows where we're looking at only the data that's changed where possible. EMR, totally different kettle of fish. We're looking at long running, high volume, big, big, big data processing that takes hours, days, and does complex calculations where we need fine grained control over the memory on the cluster itself. How do we use Glue ETL? We have a couple options. The first one is the most common, and that's what we're gonna to do today. We can jump on the console, there's Glue Studio. We'll do a bit of coding in Glue Studio where we can move from point A to point B by creating a job. And that's our kind of introduction. There are other options. You can actually just code locally, submit your script up as a zip file, and then create a Glue job. Or we've got more advanced options where you can integrate with something like PyCharm as an IDE, the professional version. Create an endpoint, and then you hook in your IDE to the Glue endpoint, and then you can develop locally, click run, submit your script up to the cloud, runs your script and gives you instant feedback. And once you're ready to go, you can create a CI CD pipeline where you commit that code, it sends it up into AWS, and then it forms a job around it. That's a bit more complex and also costly. Glue dev endpoints cost about $50 per 24 hours sitting idle. So it's really a solution if you have six or seven um, that engineers in your team and you need them kind of getting that instant feedback all the time. Great solution for that kind of rapid development, team, team driven CICD DevOps culture. However, for our kind of individual learning, the console is enough. And actually the console itself with Glue Studio 2.0 is getting better all the time. So that's enough rambling for me about Glue ETL in this video. Let's get a tutorial underway. That's jumping on the console. That's lift the data that we kind of registered with the Glue Data Catalog last time. Do some basic ETL using PySpark, and then we'll actually register that output back into the Glue Data Catalog, and then we can take a look at it through Athena as well. So we'll do that right at the end. So join me on the console, and let's get going. Hi guys, welcome back to the console. So this is lesson two where we're gonna look at Glue ETL, but just a quick recap of what we set up in lesson one, and I'll put a link to the description in case you haven't set this up yet, and then you can follow it through before jumping back to this point. We created this S3 bucket. We created an input and output location. We created the customer folder where we've put our CSV file. We've created a crawler. We've run the crawler over that CSV file, inferred the schema into the Glue Data Catalog, and then we took a quick look at that schema. So we're now at a place in the second lesson where we want to run an ETL job up here using AWS Glue ETL, and we want to output that into the output folder. So we're going to keep this simple. We're going to create a parquet output, which is a columnar format. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to go read more on parquet and it's using data lakes. And I'll also put a link at the top to the 101 series in data lakes that uses S3 and Glue if you want to take a look um, at data lakes in AWS in more detail. But for today, 
I'm going to create this job that's going to go from CSV to Parquet. So back on to the AWS Glue console and we want to look at the ETL section down here. So there's Glue Studio, which is the new offering. There's blueprints, workflows, jobs, ML transformations, triggers, dev endpoints and notebooks. The first thing we're going to do before we actually jump in and click on jobs is create a folder where we're going to put our output data of that job. So back into the bucket, click on output and this time I want to create a folder and I am going to call this one customers again. So this is where we're going to put the output of that parquet file. Perfect. Back in to Glue. ETL, as I said, a lot of different options. We're going to click on jobs. We're going to add a job. We're going to call this job uh, CSV to Parquet hyphen customer, because that makes sense. I'll assume that you don't have an IAM rule, so we'll go create IAM rule. Bit of bad practice about to happen. Um, I am going to give this everything. So go to Glue, click next permissions, and I am going to give this admin access. Next tags, next review. Give it a name, so I'm going to call this 101 glue delete just so I know to delete the role and create the role. Back onto the console, click this little refresh button or your role won't appear. Click on the role itself. So now we have the role, we're going to use Spark, so as I said at the start of the video during the theory, it's a Spark engine. We're going to use PySpark, we want to use a script proposed by AWS Glue. That might or may not be populated for you, so let's just call it CSV underscore parquet on our hyphen customer. Two buckets will be created as well if you haven't created them yet. Um, they're just used to store the scripts. Uh, click next. We want the CSV customers table. Brilliant. We want to do is change the schema, so we're just going to change the schema, i.e. infer to parquet. You want to click on create tables in your data target. We're going to click on S3. We want to go to parquet as the format change. Target path is that little folder we just set up. So it's in my bucket, it's in output, and it's the customer's folder, and we select. We're gonna go next, so this is our mapping. So we're gonna map from CSV here to Parquet on the right, one for one customer name. And if we just jump back onto that diagram, it's CSV, every column staying the same, I'm mapping down the output. So just to recap, this is CSV on this side, this is Parquet on this side, one to one in terms of column names and we're changing the data type when we get over to here. We want to go save job and edit script. Script has a lot of comments in it but if you look at the visualization you can see that it's coming in as CSV and it's leaving down here in this S3 path and if you look through it it uses a couple of things that are interesting. Glue has this concept as a dynamic data frame. It's a built it's built upon a pandas data frame in Python if you're familiar with it. If you're not you can kind of think of it like a table structure. And what it's saying is basically ingest this CSV file and then take it through, apply that one-to-one -one mapping. So customer ID becomes customer ID, name style becomes name style, title becomes title. And then write it out using a write dynamic data frame to that S3 location that has been inferred back a couple of steps. So let's save. And then just to give the full appreciation, if you hit X and you click on the job here and you say action run job, and you hit run job, the job will start. If you highlight the job, you can see that the job gets off and running. If nothing there is yet, just click that little refresh button right here. Um, job's off and running, so I will pause the video here, and then we can pick it back up once the job has completed successfully. Okay, as you can see, it took eight seconds to start up and 50 seconds to execute there, and it succeeded. This is the new Glue 2.0, so the startup time is rapid. It used to take five minutes, now it takes under a minute, so this is great. Um, if we go back on the S3, and we go into that customers folder in output, so make sure in output, we should have a parquet file. So click into it, and you have a parquet file. If you don't see it, just refresh the bucket, and hopefully it will appear for you. Excellent. So we have a parquet file, but we don't have it in the Glue Data Catalog, so we need to go create a crawler for it. So back into the console. So before we create this crawler, we'll actually want to create a new database. So let's go to database. Let's go add database. Let's call this the output database. Then we go back in the crawler now. We want to add a crawler. I'm going to call this one demo parquet customer. And we go next. 
we're going to crawl existing data stores, S3 as before, into the prefix that we were just using. So in here, output this time and customers. Next, add another data store. No. Create a service role, so it's going to call this demo parquet crawler. Delete. So I remember to delete. Let's go next. I want to run on demand database. It's going in the output this time. And for completeness, I'm going to call this one underscore part K. So I know that the two tables are different in my Glue Data Catalog, despite being in different databases. And we want to finish. Then we want to highlight. And we want to run the crawler. So again, this will take a few minutes. Um, I'll pause the video here and then we can pick it up once that crawler is run and the table is in the data catalog. Okay, that was a minute in total and that table was successfully added. So we go databases and we go to uh, output this time. We go to tables, you'll see that our Parquet customer table is there. I'm gonna click on it. And this time you can see that the table has been created again. It's in a different serialization format and the customer ID and the names are the same. Okay, so that's our ETL job working and the data registered. Now, if you had, if you have set up Athena in the last lesson, if not, you can go back and do this now. And um, we can take a look at that data. If not, feel free to go on to the third lesson where we'll look at scheduling. But if you want to have a look at the data, it's into the data catalog. This time it's the output database. So we change that query we had up before to output. And this time we want to look at parquet underscore customers. So it's parquet underscore customers. And we run the query. And Bob's your uncle, there's the data back. Okay, so simple as that. Um, that's the ETL job done. So in recap today, we created this ETL job where we lift the CSV file, we move it through Glue um, using ETL, and that was a Spark job created by AWS that we run on less than a minute, and it writes it down to that Parquet um, output location as a Parquet file. We then registered that with the Glue Data Catalog using a crawler, so we crawled that Parquet file in the output location and brought that table into the Glue Data Catalog. And then as a bonus, uh, Athena can be used to um, look at that data. So that's everything for today. Um, join me in lesson three, where we'll actually look at triggers and scheduling these jobs. So until lesson three, thanks for watching. I've been Johnny Chivers. As usual, I'll make all this information for free on my website, www.johnnychivers.co.uk. And until next time, thanks for watching.